Special Effects in Film and Television by Jake Hamilton. Question of the Week: How do artists create special effects to entertain us? Genre: Expository texts explain what certain things are and how they came to be. As you read, notice how the author explains how artists make miniature models for movie sets. In miniature, special effects (SFX) is the art of making the impossible into a fantastic reality. Special effects has always pushed the boundaries of human imagination. It keeps today's movie and television audiences glued to their seats in starry-eyed wonder. The art of miniature model making has always been an important part of special effects in movies. Some movie stories have big, spectacular, action-filled scenes. They may call for fights between dinosaurs, explosions on the Golden Gate Bridge, or an armed force charging through the desert. Movie makers can save time and money by making models for these scenes. This article tells the story of the building of a miniature landscape for a television show. Matte box reduces lens flares. Prime lens interchangeable with the zoom lens. 400 foot, 120 meter film magazine. With running time of four and one fourth minutes at normal speed. Concept model is one foot by one foot, 0.3 meters by 0.3 meter. One, a general idea. A special effects team must build a prehistoric world in a workshop. The team's first step is to make a concept model of this mini world. The model will give a general view of what the finished product will look like. This model shows that the landscape will include a fallen tree and a circular lake. Two, getting larger. The movie makers study this concept model to decide on the size and shape of the finished product. Then they make a larger and more detailed prototype model. This gives them a clearer picture of how the finished product will look. The prototype comes in sections that are fitted together like puzzle pieces. This two foot by two foot, 0.6 meter by 0.6 meter prototype is fully painted and fitted with bushes and trees. Now the team can work on the final product. Cameraman's eyepiece. Camera door is open to thread the film past the gate. Final model landscape will be in three main sections. White areas show where the divides are between the main sections. Cardboard representation of early reptile. Three, getting started. The full-size miniature model will be 24 feet by 24 feet, 7.2 meters by 7.2 meters. Building it will take real cooperation among all the SFX team members. The model's base is made of the kind of plastic used in fast food cups and boxes. Model makers carve the plastic surface to make hills and valleys and rivers and lakes. They use references such as pictures of trees and rocks to guide them. These model makers are using photographs of a dry riverbed as a guide. Model makers carve details in ground of model's front section. Miniature trees and bushes are modeled with plastic and paint, as well as real pieces of greenery. Four, carving it out. Here, the model makers are cutting out the area of the huge circular lake at the heart of the model. They will then add more surface detail and mark out other features in the landscape. Five, rebuilding. The model is cut into sections so it can be taken on trucks to the television studio. Since the model is so large and detailed, each section is numbered. That way, when the pieces reach the studio, they can be reassembled easily. Rebuilding the landscape is just like putting a huge jigsaw puzzle together. Six, foaming the model. At the studio, the model is put back together. And the miniature trees, rocks, and other surface details are all put in place. Then a technician wearing a special protective suit sprays the model. He uses a light foam made from toxic chemicals. 
The foam gives the surface of the model a smooth, natural look. He also adds bumps and dips to the surface. This makes it look just like a real landscape. To protect against toxic fumes, the technician wears a respirator. 7. In the studio. Putting the miniature landscape back together takes a great deal of attention to detail. Every last tree, bush, and rock must be exactly in place. A huge painted backdrop of blue sky streaked with clouds has been placed on the far wall. Lights positioned overhead will give the landscape more texture and shadow. Technician's head pops up between two of the main landscape sections. Appropriate large potted plants are used for the foreground. 8. Fixing in place. Model makers use a special glue to make sure the sections will not come apart. The glue is carefully dried by hand. Technicians use the same kind of blow dryer people use on their hair. That way, they can aim the hot wind just right, so it will not disturb any delicate details on the landscape surface. Computer-generated imagery. Many future movies will be created or enhanced on screen using computer-generated imagery, CGI. This 3D animated dragon has been created as a wireframe image before being fleshed out, enhanced, and lit carefully, all on a computer. Reptile Modeling Early reptiles were needed to inhabit the prehistoric scene, so miniature models were prepared. After it was agreed which reptiles to model, including moss chops, left, each one was sculpted carefully in non-drying clay, which is easy to shape. The model is attached to metal leg stands, and the smallest details are added at this stage, including horned backbones, razor-sharp claws, and scaled reptile skin. The model maker sprays the model with plastic sealer to make it possible to release the fiberglass of the mold from the clay later on. A dividing wall of clay is then placed around the model, right, so that when the mold is made, it can be split into two halves. The mold is filled with foam latex, and the result is this white-faced reptile. The model makers can now paint its skin with different textures of green and yellow. The creature is hollow in the middle so that the SFX technicians can get their arms up and inside to operate it without the viewer seeing. Foam latex model of a Lystrosaur. Water makes Lystrosaur glisten on film. The final image of one reptile perched on a fallen log in the miniature landscape looks incredibly realistic. The creature has also been given small eyes, pointed claws, and fanged teeth. Tricks of the Trade The model makers go to great lengths to make a miniature look as realistic as possible. Here, they are working on a slight depression in the surface that was carved out for a lake. It is filled with water to a depth of just 1.5 inches, 4 centimeters. The model makers are layering the shallow water with fabric to make it look more like a deep lake. Model makers refer to television monitor for camera's eye view. Large potted trees are used for foreground section. Real log is used in foreground of landscape. Toy Soldiers Director Steven Spielberg used a miniature model to plan shots for the film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Directors often use miniature models to plan the way a scene should look, including actors' movements, the scenery, and any special lighting or camera angles. Spielberg decides where to position the camera for the desert shot. Sand dunes are constructed from polystyrene and beach sand. Miniature models of tents, tanks, and other vehicles are used. Finally ready. It has taken most of the day to reassemble the entire miniature landscape. Now the scene is ready for filming. During filming, SFX team members beneath the platform can reach up and move the reptile models around from below.
Notice how the trees in the background section of the landscape are much smaller than the trees in the foreground section. This makes the scene seem to roll back away rapidly into the distance. The large painted backdrop and studio lighting add to the effect of a vast prehistoric landscape roamed by early reptiles. Miniature trees are planted in the section behind muslin coated pond. Landscape is supported on timber platform. Sand used on ground of miniature and to cover cracks in model surface.